Hi guys, welcome to the Monday Night Golf Show. Myself, Rick Shields, down here with Pete Finch. We're at Trafford Golf Centre and we're going to fill you in with the roundup of... Let's knock that off. <laughs> the roundup of what's been happening over the last week or so in the golfing world. Indeed, lots and lots kind of going on in the professional world and also our world, if you yeah. want to look at if it like that. Care. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just got loads of them. We've been down last week, pretty much spent all week at the uh, PGA Golf Show uh, here in the UK. Loads of stuff. So much stuff to actually talk about. Um, and actually tell you guys about yeah and we, we were talking about this on the way I bet in the grand scheme of things the, the UK PGA golf show is just minute <laughs> compared to the US golf show but we, had, we did our best we had three conference rooms full of, of manufacturers of brands of equipment of um, every, everything everything really, really yeah. absolutely everything there was and a teaching was, conference on as well yeah it's like a teaching and retail conference kind of combined into one so we were buzzing all over the place really annoying as many people as possible yeah we didn't get quite as much content filmed as we'd like no you did a roundup every day didn't you we did so a roundup every day so Peach channel for that uh, we ended up spending most of the time on the foresight simulator <laughs> <laughs> if you've not seen the video go and check out pete's nearest the pin attempt it's very near you don't have to la- you don't have to wait long in the video just uh, go and watch it <laughs> first half of the second first yeah. half of the second half so there's some things we can talk about which we're going to talk about clubs wise and there's things also that we're, we're, we've had our hands tied that we're not allowed to talk about zipped up because mm. they're still under embargo which is in the golf terms you just can't talk about the club basically it's, it's a bit annoying oh, we would do but we, we got to see them yeah we got to we got to see them <laughs> we thought they were great I'll try, we'll try and try and move that message across to you guys now what we saw at the golf show <laughs> see if you can see that message um, right things that aren't a secret two uh, new tight list drivers uh, there's two on the market there's the D2 the D3 mm-hmm. they came out kind of in the press last week but they're not out to the middle of November in the UK um, you like the look at them didn't you yes I did I did uh, what I'll probably say is with, with tight list clubs I mean <laughs> They look very similar to the last lot. If they look very, very similar, I mean, we're going down to test them um, at the end of October down in um, Saint Ives. Yes. Saint Ives. So we'll kind of have more of an idea. But when you look it down, they look very, very similar. Technology has changed a bit, um, so they say. But it's all. So I'm looking forward to hitting. I am looking forward to hitting. Skeptic. Um, <laughs> we've got we've got some new Callaway drivers, which. Some new Callaway drivers. Some new more. Oh Two my more. god! And we were doing a count up before. See if see if you can get better than this. We had it counted up as the, these are their set six and seventh drivers this year. <laughs> this year, six and seventh driver of this year. They've got the Big Bertha Alpha, um, and this is the eight eight fifteen version. Uh, they've got the normal eight fifteen and the double diamond. Uh, 815. The story behind the double diamond apparently it's something to do with the ski uh, skiing kind of um, a grading. Mm. So the harder the ski slope, it becomes a double diamond, and they've brought that into the golf turn. So the double diamond golf club is the slightly harder one to hit. Yeah, I mean, I, tailor so, made a lot. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it's, it's normally tailor made who get the reputation of bringing out club after club after club after club and Seven. kind of saturating the market, but. Seven seven drivers in a year is a lot of drivers. And so we're going to be testing them soon. Yeah. So I, we'll see how they perform. <laughs> it's a lot of drivers. Uh, we also, there's some Callaway clubs we're not allowed to talk about. Yeah, so there's even more coming out. <laughs> well, no, we better be careful what we say here, but there's more, more clubs coming out. We're not going to say what type of clubs. There's more clubs coming out mm-hmm. that we're not allowed to talk about. Yeah. Not saying drivers, not saying, not drivers, but... Um, some other gear, uh, ping, ping for next year. Yeah, we're not allowed to talk about that either. Um, it's are we allowed? To, we're not allowed to. Well, no, no we're not. We're not allowed I, to. I, I bet most of the people watching already know this. You know, you guys know more than what we do most of this time. We get told, and you like, yeah, we knew yeah, that. We knew that <laughs> once ago. <laughs> so, we're like, really. <laughs> so that's some new ping gear coming out for next year. Um, we've got some new. There are there is some new kind of tailor made gear. Um, coming out which we will get our hands on very soon very soon very soon uh, we're actually uh, just coincidentally completely coincidence we are actually going down to the Belfry this Wednesday uh, to do a little bit of filming uh, yep. God knows what on we just don't know 
I, I think well, it's, it's not connected to anything we've spoken about so far. No. No? No, it's not. No. Um, and possible, 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 uh, I'm checking my emails as we speak, uh, rematch against a certain YouTube team, duo as well. Uh, the guys we played at Wentworth, me and my golf, so there's a potential... We'll have, we'll have to see. I mean, hopefully, if we can't get out on the course, we'll, we'll have a meet up we anyway. Will. We'll, we'll have we'll a match anyway, whatever we're doing. It's depending they, if those guys can can stomach uh, our, our, our revenge our, <laughs> our revenge match. That's what it's going to be about, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. We, yeah, we did get, if you've not watched the Wentworth videos, check Don't. them out. <laughs> uh, Don't bother. Check them out. Probably leave out the last 10 minutes. In fact, watch it. part two. Yeah, oh yeah, part two was part great. Two. Part two, you know, two watch was part good. two. That's the best part you need to watch. Awesome. Um, <laughs> so possible match up with those guys. That'll be really good fun. We we got with Andy and Piers, um, and then Cobra and Puma Gear. They're flying things out. Good relationship with Ricky Fowler at the moment. So they're they're looking at right, trying to grow mm. this, uh, grow the, oh, and obviously pull to grow this brand at the moment. And they're doing some good stuff. Probably that's probably the most the thing I was most excited about actually when I was there the Cobra stuff yeah. Cobra stuff and the Puma stuff um, can't obviously kind of speak about what it involves but the clubs look great and the clothing line looks awesome actually as well. I really really like the clothing line it so does. that's looking good that's and looking then good. there was some manufacturers that were really really trying to make an impact at this golf show mm. uh, the first one as soon as you walked in through the door the biggest stand in there <laughs> and the tallest and the tallest and the grandest and the most ambitious. Can you? Could you guess? Could you imagine this? Imagine walking in through the tailor made. Uh, tailor made. It was not tailor made. <laughs> walking in through the trade show doors and the first biggest stand that you see. What do you reckon it would be? I know the answer. I don't know why you're looking at me. I'm not asking you. I'm asking these guys. <laughs> Pete. Oh, you're asking me now. I'm asking you. All oh, right. Okay. Well, I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the answer. The guys are waiting. <laughs> it was Shrixon and, Shrixon and Cleveland. As Huge. Soon, as soon as you walked in, an um, absolute monstrous stand. Now, we've already done kind of the club testing uh, yeah. for the Shrixon and Cleveland products, so check those both out. Uh, check those out on both the channels. But the whole, as soon as you walked in, it was such, oh. a, <laughs> such a massive impact. The, it's kind of their, it's just a real statement of intent yeah. about how they're kind of going about it this they're year. They're going through this year. Um, Big time. I mean, Fortunately, they've got the products to back it up, so it's going to be interesting to see kind of how it all pans out. But yeah, they're uh, they're going for a big. And they've time. not only got the products now; they've got the ambassadors work, you know, on their side now. So obviously, players like Gray McDowell, he's been using Shrixen mm -hmm. for a long time. You have got Keegan Bradley signed back up to to yeah, yeah. Uh, Shrixen, all using Cleveland wedges as well. And then you've got the main short game guy in the world, moved now from one of the biggest manufacturers that brings out a lot of drivers to. Cleveland. Yeah, Dave Peltz, who was at the uh, show as well, in a ambassadorial role for Shrix in Cleveland, but also actually giving a coaching conference as well to the uh, to the PGA pros gathered there. Very, very, very interesting stuff. Awesome guy. Um, very, very engaging. Uh, nice. I got to have a chat to him as well, which was which was lovely. It was yes. lovely. And for for a gentleman who's been in the game for an awful long time, his enthusiasm. Mm. Oh. God. The, the, the passion for the game was just radiating out of oh. him. It was, it was brilliant. And it how really long does it take him to get to his phenomenal back garden to do some practice? Is it 30 something seconds? 38 seconds it takes him to get from his, I think it's his living room. We, you've got pictures of this guy. Oh, yeah, I'm going to put the pictures up now. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's his garden. That's the. If you watch That's it, if, his if you're looking at that picture, yes, that is a replica of the 17th uh, Sawgrass. Just and, up at the top of the image there. And yes, to the right hand side, that is a replica of the Road Hole. And yes, that is a replica of Pebble Ridge. And yes, that is a replica of more holes at Augusta. It's unbelievable. Awesome. <laughs> All artificial as well. So he literally steps out of his, his porch and he is transported to the greatest practice facility short game that we've ever seen it was unbelievable awesome it's just unbelievable. and he just loved it he loved it he was showing us clips of shots that he'd hold um i don't know if i can get hold of any of those i'll try but shots that he'd hold and his, his passion is just awesome it was loves, great loves, it, loves the short game came, came away and very kind of infused I've, my all my lessons the day after were all the short <laughs> game that's all we've covered since um i've had a reporter down as well uh, one of my fellow pros matt fryer down 
at the Grove in London because Dave Peltz actually did a big seminar and a conference down there as well. So hopefully we're going to get some footage over the next few days of that. So stay tuned for that, guys, because that's more of the teaching side of things. We couldn't film the kind of teaching side of things, did we? We asked him some yeah. questions on uh, on other aspects, but not not so much the short game. Um, and then the other big company that was trying to make a big statement, someone who's not been in the market for a long time, Lynx yeah, Golf. Yeah, Lynx Golf. They... Um, Really going for it. Mm. They, they had they had a large stand. Yeah, a large stand and a lot of a lot of products as well. Mm. Like good looking stuff as well. We didn't get a chance to kind of whack it away, but I think you're. No, I, I've got some links yeah. now with the guy at Links. Links with Links. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be happening. <laughs> so I've got some links with Links, and I'm going to get some golf clubs in the near future to be testing, and it, and it looks great. Mm. It looked it very very in your face. Some oh, of the stuff. Oh, very the, very the shafts. In your face, Look so. at the picture of these shafts now on screen. You certainly, uh, certainly wouldn't be. Uh, You'd have lost to be playing well for that. You'd have to play really well. You could guide some planes. Let, let in me with know them. if you like those shafts. We had mixed response on social media on when I posted that picture. Tell me if you like those shafts. Would you play with the shafts like that? Um, we're going to do some Q and A's in a sec because we've got lots and lots to fly through Facebook and Twitter. All of these thing, questions they were posting on Pete's portals of communication is Facebook, is Twitter. Go and check them out. Portal. Oh, they are that. Portal. I think what we should do is the, the, you do it. The week I'll do it next week. So every question next week will be posted on my social media. All the questions this week will post on Pete's and they'll alternate each week. Otherwise, they get mixed up everywhere and we end up losing some of them, don't yeah, we? Really? That's right. And uh, everyone uses the hashtags, etc. Uh, we're going to do some Q and A's, but before that, we've got a swing analysis with a difference today. Yeah. I mean, a lot of you guys have been asking for because we we tended we've picked kind of in the kind of the past weeks um, players from kind of the European Tour, Men's Tour, and the men's tour, the PJ tour and then the Ryder Cup but we've not done any kind of ladies uh, swings or senior swings kind of so far so we wanted to focus on we did Bernard we did Bernard we did Bernard but it. we've not focused on the ladies game which is such a shame because if you do have the chance to get to a ladies tour event go watch it it's almost sometimes I'm in my past experience, it's almost sometimes more enjoyable than yeah. the men's because you can actually get a little bit closer to the players yeah. and they can really play and it's it's great to actually watch. So absolutely, we're going to do analysis of the number one kind of player on the ladies tour in the US at the moment, Stacey Lewis, who, yeah, quite an interesting character and yeah, quite an little, interesting uh, swing as well. A little story behind her as well, the fact that she was in the back brace for a long time. Yeah, so yeah, touch, really, really bad problems. We'll touch with on that as well. So. To, obviously, overcome injuries is, is a big thing in golf. So we'll jump on the mat, do a bit of Stacey, golf swings, uh, Stacey Lewis's golf swing, talk about that, and then we'll do some Q&As. <laughs> <Not that little. laughs> is that... That's a problem on the ball. <laughs> well, just... We should really maybe hit a golf shot before we start filming sometimes. <laughs> we really should. So Stacey Lewis golf swing. What a couple of things that I we spotted while we looked at the through golf swing is the fact that she uses the levers massively and she leaves absolutely nothing left behind. So what you'll see if you get Pete up to the top, Stacey, once she's at the top, gets into quite a high left arm position. Yeah. So it's not right what, arm is quite high as well, really. So you wouldn't say it was kind of a traditional top of back swing position, but what is traditional top of back swing position? From here then, she rotates her hips one way, squats and turns, and it's from here now that I think the bigger difference. She leaves absolutely nothing behind her. What I mean by that, you'll see in a follow through. As she swings through, her arms are extended, and a follow through, can you do this, Pete? Ah! <laughs> it's literally... <laughs> it <popping> me up. <laughs> it's so far around her body that she can't literally leave anything behind in that shot. Arms extend, follow through is completely and utterly full. So we, we noticed as well, we did a little bit of research on stage, we, we read an article where she said when she was 11, she actually had, was it a back brace yes. to straighten up her spine? A number of operations on her, on her back and pretty much all throughout high school she had to wear kind of like a brace to support her. I think so. seven and a half years we read it for. Imagine Crazy. that time, imagine. That is a really crucial golf development time. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, Stacey's come back into this game. I don't, I wouldn't, she couldn't have played golf. There's no oh, way. Man. Unless she was just putted and chipped all the time. Oh, I don't know, but I'll tell you what, even with a, a normal functioning spine, I can't really do that money. <laughs> that really well. Show that follow through again. So, yeah. Big, little pride backswing. Gains kind of power. Tends to drop it a little bit in here, really squeezes it out, but. 
just the extension and the rotation. Not really. Not really. It's that there. It's it's almost a female version of McElroy. Yeah. I'm, McElroy does very much a similar movement where on the way through his follow through looks like he's Yeah. Oh. I think I think it's one of those things. I think on <laughs> first thing you did there. I think on that one I was almost trying to replicate that follow through just by my arms, but it's her body that turns into Incomplete. this position as well, yeah. So it's the extension of the arms, but it's also that turn of the shoulders all the way through as well. It, it really is a position where nothing's left behind. So if you do want to try and replicate Stella Stacey's follow through, stretch, <laughs> stretch first. My goodness me! So really high at the top, then it's a bit of a drop into the ball. So even there, you're really going for that. That's probably, oh, that's probably not. That's probably 89% no. of the way there that she's doing. 89. 80 or 90% of the way there. So, <laughs> it's quite a good measurement. So, yeah. It's a big turn. I mean, that's oh. pretty much all the way there. But if you were to go any further than that, why would you? A bit of a decent distance, really decent distance. Um, so, one of the things that I think you can pick up from ladies' golf is how they can utilize their frame, mm -hmm. let's say, not as much. Muscle mass? Yeah, not as much muscle mass, not as much strength. Generally is kind of... Generally, male, male generally. Goals. We're not saying all the time. How they can maximise their performance by not always swinging, let's say, perfectly by the book. I mean, Stacey's brilliant. She's got yeah. a great technical style swing, but there's ways to be able to create power without having the physical strength that sometimes that, that um, you need to propel the ball quite as far. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she's obviously not the... Yeah, she's not thick set. She's not muscly. She's just so lean and flexible and that's how she's able to generate all these yeah. big turns is yeah. how she's able to we, generate we can do that on a general we can do that on an everyday basis God, well, we, can't, we can't do it today anyway we'll be in a back race <laughs> <laughs> let's go one more the upright and then that extension through see even there naturally it's just not easy to actually fire through that I can't go much further than that I really can't so guys we're going to jump back on now answer some questions um, and We've got the, all the questions on Pete's uh, social platform today, and then we're going to fly through them as quick as we possibly can. So. Right, guys, so Stacey Lewis's golf swing done. Um, take hopefully everything that you can from that, because that's a very, very solid sound golf swing. Yeah, we're going to jump on the Q&As now. So we've got on Twitter, hashtag Monday Night Golf Show. We're going to fly through these as quick as we possibly can, because we've got a lot a lot, a lot. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I think we have to really think about how we how we condense these slightly. <laughs> okay, so we'll fly off. Andy Kelsall, um on Twitter. Do you miss playing competitive golf, either club or pro comps? And do you miss trying to lower your handicaps? Um, I, I don't particularly miss lowering my handicap because I just wanted to get to four and I, I found it quite um, quite pressurised to get to that. I was fine after I got to that, but I don't miss that. Um, competitive golf, do miss it slightly, but kind of with the course vlogs that we do, it's... There's still that little bit of a competitive edge. You're not playing for too much money, but no. it's something I do miss a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah same same on, on the competitive edge of things, because we're not playing pros, we don't get the chance to practice quite as heavily as we'd like to. Uh, I do actually slightly miss trying to lower my handicap, because it, it's like a gauge, it's like a challenge. You know, you try and lose lose weight, or you try and do... It's kind of that, it's continuous. You Each week you improve it, and it's a gauge of how good you are. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I do, I do miss that side of things a little bit. Okay. Uh, what's your best score? Oh, we've done this one. Yeah, we've done that one. Alan, if you, Alan has some time. Just view back um, a few kind of uh, episodes before. You can have, have a watch through all of that. Yeah. <laughs> we've done that before. <laughs> uh, Dave Simmons um, from Simo. Oh, he's even put his own name <laughs> <in there. laughs> Refer to himself in the third person there. <laughs> from Simo. Um, predict 2015 major winners in order. Oof. So he's, he's actually answered him, himself. Has he? I don't know. No, he's not. His suggestions, I think. Ah, suggestions. So predict, we'll do this. Predict 2015 major winners in order. Okay. Uh, Masters, McElroy. McElroy. Open. Uh, Rose. Okay. US Open. <laughs> uh, I'm going to popular one. Patrick Reed. US PGA. Um, it's going to be some randomer. Complete randomer. Um help me on that one I don't know that one <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I'll go for McElroy for the Masters. I'll go for uh, McElroy for the Open. I'll go McElroy for the US Open. And I'll go... McElroy for the US PGA. Okay. Diverse. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dan Birkin... Um, uh, hi guys, best way to overcome nerves on a tricky four foot putt? Ooh, um, I- I'm all ears here, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, that, is, that is a tricky question for a tricky, a tricky situation. Um, probably, well, obviously a bit of practice, but pre shot routine and concentrate on the process rather than the fear of the outcome, if that kind of makes sense. But yeah. that'll be, um, be a good one to do a separate video on, really. Yeah. So just like that, I'll probably do a video on that. Um, how often should you change your grips? And the same question with your wedges. Um, at least once a season, yeah. if you're playing regular. And the same question for your wedges. How, many, how often should you change your wedges? Again, once a season. Once a season. Yeah. Depending on how much you practice. And yeah, play. exactly. Um, uh, um, I just had a name. Insomnia. Somnia Jack. <laughs> Insomnia Jack. <laughs> Hi guys, good putting drill to replicate pressure putting core style on the practice green. You can do the same thing with that nervous putting one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, probably the the best one to do is put something on it. I used to do it, I used to put my dinner on it when I was uh, trying to get better as a junior. I used to have a ladder putting drill, so put the balls kind of different distances away from the hole back in a straight line, kind of five or ten, say. used to try and hold them all. If I miss one, I started again, and I couldn't go have my dinner until I hold them all in a row. I was wow. a skinny child. Was that you making that really, your parents? Um, that was my parents. <laughs> Pretty poor upbringing. They loved it. They said, right, you've got to hold these 50 in a row before you eat. I was like, okay. <laughs> I'll try. Uh, right, we'll quickly, well, we've got a lot on Facebook. Yeah, jump onto Facebook. Uh, we, well, right, quickly. Ryan Clark, uh, counterbalance putters, uh, believe in the science or personal preference? Um, well, you asked this question actually at the, the seminar and it yeah, didn't yeah. quite get the response that we were looking for, really. Mm. Um, I, I think different putts are different strokes. You know, there's, there's no question about it. Uh, I do believe in the science, and I do believe there's a, an element of personal preference. I've seen putters, I've seen great putters use putters that shouldn't suit their stroke, mm-hmm. and likewise, you know, I've seen putters who should are hitting putts using putters that are perfectly suited to them but can't hold a, a barn door. So yeah, I think there's a little bit of both there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you could fill all your golf bag with woods, irons and a putter, what clubs would you pick and why would you pick those clubs? Well, it's the clubs that we would use in our bag, yeah? Yeah. So we'll do what's in the bag soon. <laughs> yeah, that is what, you know, we use the clubs that we want to use, you know. Um, what is the most embarrassing shot you have ever hit? Whoa, crikey. Um, I've never hit a bad shot. <laughs> Bit Jack Nicholas psychology for you there. That is I've never hit a bad shot. Um, most embarrassing. Oh, I've hit some stinking first tee shots. God, yeah. Some real no, not just on the video, but in general in life. <laughs> oh God, yeah. In <laughs> life, <laughs> you're in green. First tee is never a good strong point for me. I'm, I'm always dreadful on that first tee. But um, I remember my captain's driving one time. I'll quickly go through his story. Captain's driving. It was a dog leg to the left, and as a 13 year old kid I thought right I'm going to go for it I'm going to go for this corner got the drive route it's all out of bounds left over the drive range you just have to hit it over and uh, hit the worst bottomed Healy golf shot I've ever hit in my life which I was so proud about because it didn't go out of bounds it didn't actually go in but it was awful it was straight but it was dreadful but it was the embarrassment that I was saying I'm going to hit it over this corner I, I was preempting the shot and it uh, didn't pay off so I got stick for that for quite a long time <laughs> um, go on, do you want to do this next one? Uh, yep. Uh, would you rather win a green jacket or a claret jug? Um, claret jug for me. I, I actually think green jacket for me. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd prefer to win the Masters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really? I just think it's just an awesome tournament. Uh, Ma might love it or hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Thanks, James. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, uh, Sean Cartwright, a few questions here, but. Uh, we'll probably have to just pick the one issue because you've asked quite a few questions. We might have to kind of push you through back for the next time. But would you choose accuracy over distance or vice versa? It's quite an interesting one. Um, I don't know what you choose. Well, I, I choose distance. 
There's only one of them you can do at the moment. Uh, accuracy, I'm not, I'm not that great at. Even though, even though I can't do it, I still wouldn't choose it. I'd still choose distance. Um, I'd, I'd probably say with um, with modern balls, with modern kind of club technology, most of the courses that we kind of play at, unless it's super tight, probably choose distance because a 100-yard wedge shot is going to be a lot easier than a 140-yard 9-9, even out of semi-rough. If it starts going into the big stuff, then... Yeah, we've got a bit of an issue, but I always prefer a little bit more length, probably. Yeah. As long as um, you don't go too deep into We're not going to be able to do all of these. We'll, we'll do one that's got uh, the most likes. Uh, Jack Williams, uh, what is the best way to practice in the winter? Ooh. Great question. That's an interesting question. I t- well, I'll let you answer this, because I've got some bit of a shameless plug here, but I've got quite a few videos coming out on a winter fitness schedule and kind of winter practice drills you can do, so... I won't give all my secrets away just yet. You have to plug, plug, plug. tune in and watch those. Uh, my advice is go and watch Pete's videos. Um, <laughs> I'll stop it. <laughs> uh, God, there's loads, there's loads, there's loads. Harry Hodgson asked all the same question three times. Uh, if you could choose any player on tour to coach or caddy, who would it be? Um, McElroy, McElroy. Because um, you literally just have to point him in the right direction and yeah, say hit. That's, that's, <laughs> no, actually, no, Fury. Because you're never going to change your swing. All you literally have to do is point him in the right direction. <laughs> Tap um, him on the head. Well done, Jim. Uh, Rob Puff. Oh, we can't say that, Rob. <laughs> we can't say that. Oh, no, we can't. Sorry, Rob. No, we can't Rob. say that, Rob. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, however, though, tailor made. Yeah. But go and check out. Uh, <laughs> can't read the question out. Uh, last one. Um, should you play? Do, 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 do. We'll go last one. Andy Goldfather's Philliam, uh, Williams. Williams. Phillips. Phillips. Sorry. Andy Goldfather <laughs> Phillips. Um, hi, is Peter. Real, is that your real name? <laughs> I want to see the birth certificate, Andy. I don't quite believe you on that one. Uh, it's asked to you, Pete. Don't even ask me. Oh, oh okay. Hi. <laughs> I'll ask the question. Okay, Andy. Okay, okay. Hi, Peter. Hi, Goldfather. <laughs> During the takeaway, do you feel you take the club away with your left or right? I'm glad I'm asking you this question. <laughs> take the club away with your left or right arm or both equally? I've been having success lately connecting, concerning on both the club to the top with the left and really relaxing the right. Keep up the good work. So is it left arm? Is it right arm? Is it both? Um, I, I've, I've got to be honest. At the moment, I am working very much on keeping my hands, my arms, my wrists very much out of the shot and just focusing on using my shoulders to actually rotate away <laughs> so back not, and through. None of, the so, above. So none of the above. But that's just my personal preference what I'm working on at the moment. I'm just working on the concept of keeping this triangle between my shoulders and my arms, keeping it fixed in one unit and rotating my body a little bit more. But that's just, I'm experimenting with a few different I suppose things. that does just make your arms go back in a straight, in together, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, really? it just makes them kind of work together. But that's not for everyone, that's just something I'm playing around with. So guys, that was, like I said, we'd love to get, and we love the fact that we're getting lots and lots of questions now. We really, really do appreciate it. And just fortunately, unless you want this video to be four hours long, we can't answer everything. But still, still keep, no, we're not doing four hours. <laughs> still, still keep sending them, guys, because we will get through them as much as we can. Like I said, the questions will be on my uh, social network platforms next week. So check me out on Facebook, Twitter, um, and I'll, Pete will remind me to ask the question because it's always Pete that remembers. <laughs> uh, guys, do subscribe to both channels. Uh, we've got some great content coming up. Um, mm, this week just this week yeah, just this loads week. and loads and loads and an exciting next few months in the build up to the end of the year um, stay tuned thanks for watching guys give it a thumbs up comment down below and we'll see you next week see you guys yeah.